Hello everyone, my name is Major Stephen Moore and I am the Assistant Professor of Military Science here at the University of Cumberland's Army ROTC program. Thank you for joining me today and I hope that you and your family are doing well during this unprecedented time in our nation's history. Before we begin, I've done my best to make everything that I'll discuss with you today as clear and concise as possible. However, I know that at the end of this video, most of you will still have some additional questions. So I have three options for you. First, go to the university's website and schedule a visit with us. Everything at the moment is still on hold. However, by the end of the summer and definitely by the beginning of the fall, everything will be back to normal. So schedule a visit with us. We'd be happy to have you on the campus, show you around the facility, and even introduce you to some of our cadets. Next, send us an email. Send us either your questions or some information about you, and we'd love to set up a Skype session, a FaceTime session, or whatever works best for you to help you understand everything that we've discussed today. We know that this is an extremely important decision, and we definitely want to be able to help you understand everything that we've discussed today. And lastly, look us up on any one of our social media platforms. We're extremely proud of everything that we do with the university, and we're extremely proud of our cadets and how they're growing. So check us out and follow us along. Now let's begin. So the first thing we're going to discuss today is some reasons you should even consider joining ROTC. And if you continue along this path and ultimately commission and look back on it, I've kind of distilled it down to three big points. First and foremost, you're going to make an impact, whether that's at the state or county level or all the way up through some sort of overseas operations, you're going to make it an immediate and long lasting impact. You see there from the stat that we've currently got soldiers supporting some sort of operation in over 170 different countries. So it's extremely rewarding to think about your time and the things that you're doing and how it's going to definitely be captured in history books. So that's a, the very first reason that I would, I would look at considering joining is that you're going to have an impact. Next is you're going to obtain a competitive advantage. You may not want to spend 20 years or longer in the military. I got it. It's not for everybody. But the advantage that it does give you is you're going to have an extremely focused leadership development program, and then you're going to be put into areas that, unlike your peers right now, uh, going through high school, eventually going through college, they're not going to have the same level of responsibility immediately graduating. You're going to be responsible for potentially 40 some odd soldiers lives, multiple millions of dollars worth of equipment. And that's something that's extremely marketable to the business community outside. Um, I can't explain to you how many uh, different headhunting firms looked at uh, trying to recruit me into the business sector. Um, if you continue on, you'll see uh, it's, it's weird. Your, your email or your um, snail mail inbox changes from credit card applications to now uh, junior military officer recruiting firms. But as you can see there from the stat, um, a lot of Fortune 500 companies look to you based upon that leadership experience and that responsibility that you've had, and they want you to be a part of their team to, to definitely reap the benefits from it. Next, you're going to be able to potentially walk away with uh, a college education paid for or a considerable amount of it paid for. Um, that's not something that most people have. Um, if you see there from the stat that there's a, there's a significant amount of debt that some of the students walk away from and potentially don't even walk into a job. So not only are you going to be able to make an impact, obtain that competitive advantage by getting that experience, you're also going to be able to get that advantage by walking out in a good financial footing. So I know there's three bubbles there that you see on the screen. But the first thing that uh, I'll sell you is that we're not going to cover everything based upon uh, this format that take a long time. But I definitely want to go into the financial opportunities so you guys can kind of see some of the things that are available to you. So what I've tried to do for you all is group the different financial opportunities we have in about three general categories. The first thing that you see there is the non-scholarship, non-contract option. And what that means is that if you're trying to figure out if ROTC is for you, just come, take the class, participate in the labs, and then also sign up for our physical readiness training class that we have. And the university is going to give you $750 a year just to take the class. Um, there's no essay, there's no other crazy requirements. It's just to come out and see if this is something that 
you want to continue and potentially start as a career path. The next thing that you'll see is the non-scholarship contracted option. Eventually you're going to determine whether this is for you or not for you. And if it's not for you, that's fine. That's, that's um, totally okay. Um, but if it is for you, one of the benefits that you have right off the bat is that you're going to end up not only getting those university provided incentives, that $750, but you're also going to get a book stipend. Now, I know the University of the Cumberlands is transitioning to um, where everybody on campus has free books during their free rental program, right? So that $1,200 or $1, that you see per year is something that can go into your pocket to help offset any other financial costs that you have. So right off the bat, contracting, not only are you going to get the $750, you're going to get that $1,200 for book stipend, which you could use for other financial um, requirements. And then, of course, you're going to get $420 a month for generally 10 months out of the year. So that's a pretty good deal just to sign up and say that you want to, want to do this. So it generally equates out to about $6,150 a year. And then the next piece, if you want to pursue something a little bit more, uh, we've got generally two different categories. We've either got the national uh, scholarships through the ROTC program, or there's some other tuition assistance programs that are there uh, provided by either the reserves or the National Guard. Um, not only are you going to be contracted already, so you'll start to get some of those uh, additional perks um, of the, uh, the monthly stipend, but then also you potentially get um, some of your tuition or your room and board, or potentially both paid for um, by the Department of the Army. So let's go ahead and look at probably what's more relevant to you all right now, and that's the National ROTC Scholarship. So what's important to remember is that this is something that you're going to compete amongst all of your peers. So it's a merit-based uh, scholarship. So the better you do on some of the standardized tests, the better you do in school with your GPA, uh, the more involved you are within uh, sports, your community, and those types of things, it's going to help set you apart from your peers. So continue to, to, to stay strong. I know when I went through my high school experience, um, I potentially looked at um, stopping sports, focusing on school, but I can tell you to stay with some of these things. Um, not only will it make you a better individual, um, but it will also help you be a lot more competitive if you're trying to pursue this scholarship. So there's a lot of information that's on there. Um, the, the big things that I would try to point, point out is that it's generally broken up into two to, to four year opportunities. So down at the bottom right, you'll see uh, the general timeline. Now this June, um, historically it's been about the 12th of June, but about the middle of June, the scholarship window will open. So go on to uh, the Go Army Ed uh, website, create an account, and start navigating through there to get ready to start filling out your application. Now I know you have a, a pretty lengthy time to do it, but what I would encourage you to do is start getting as many of those requirements knocked out as soon as you can. Um, some of the, the requirements not to go e through every single one, um, not only are you gonna upload your transcripts, your standardized test scores, but you're also gonna take a physical readiness um, assessment uh, that can be done there at your high school. Uh, you can do it here at the university if you want to travel up and do it. Um, and then in addition, you're going to do some interviews with our professor of military science. Um, and then also, you're going to um, upload any of the activities that you're doing. And what happens is uh, when that board or that application window closes, um, your file gets taken and it's measured across all of the different applicants across the nation and then it starts to word out. Um, just, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, we've ended our last award recognition for, for all of the, the uh, scholarship um, applicants. So probably about May, uh, or I'm sorry, probably about March timeframe, you'll find out whether or not you were uh, awarded that. But if uh, it didn't work out for you and you weren't awarded uh, one of those scholarships for whatever reason, um, don't fret, there's still an opportunity for you to compete amongst um, your peers at the campus. Um, generally about a two to three year opportunity for you. Um, it's not as, um, as competitive as far as across the nation, but you are competing with, with some of the students across our region. So 
Um, although you may have not had the highest GPA or the highest ACT score to initially get you considered, come in, do extremely well in college, and you'll definitely be able to be considered for that. Um, it's about the same application process, but instead of submitting a paperwork file up, you actually go in front of a board and answer some questions um, to kind of get a little bit better uh, feel for what you are as, as far as a person. So a lot of information on there. I know you guys can kind of study it, take a look at it and see if this is something that you want to pursue. Um, you see uh, what it looks like as far as obligations down there in the bottom left. If you are awarded one of these and you elect to go active, uh, that means that you're going to owe you know, four years of active status and four years of what we call individual ready reserve. Um, it means that you're basically a civilian, but you're kind of on call if, if something uh, catastrophic in our nation's security uh, kicks off. You're going to be one of the first ones that's called. So that's, that's pretty much the same general format that you'll see for all of these obligations. Um, the numbers of years might differ based upon the option, but that's what those two things mean. So take a moment, take a look at it. Um, and by all means, like we said, if you have any questions, um, go ahead and email us or contact us and we'll be happy to kind of further elaborate. So the next thing that we're going to discuss is um, the simultaneous membership program. So unlike the, uh, the National High School Scholarship where it's extremely uh, merit-based on how well you do in school and, and how well you do in some of the activities, uh, the SMP program is, is nothing more but um, how well you are as, as a physical human being. So are you, if you're physically fit and you're able to, to serve your nation and you're willing to give up some of your time, then that's another option for you. And you can end up walking away with a pretty good um, financial advantage as well. So if you start looking at this, what this essentially means is that um, you're going to sign up to enlist within the Army National Guard or the uh, United States Army Reserve. Um, you can either go to basic training or you can elect to forego basic training. It's up to you. Um, there's some definite uh, perks to going to basic training as far as not only getting you into the culture, but then also uh, there's some financial benefits, which you can kind of see off there to the side. Um, if you forego basic training, you aren't going to be eligible for some of the Montgomery GI Bill um, additional allowances and, of course, um, the kicker bonus. But... Um, I'm not the, uh, the, the exact recruiter that you're going to want to talk to about some of those ins and outs. Um, some of those monetary amounts might change depending upon the year and depending upon the need. Um, and if that's something that you'd want to do, um, I can definitely link you up with our um, National Guard recruiter representative that we have or even our reserve recruiter that we have here at the, the university. But the main thing to take away from this is that you're going to enlist but at the same time, you're going to contract with the ROTC program. And it doesn't mean that you have to stay in the reserves, and it doesn't mean that you have to stay in uh, the National Guard. Um, we're going to kind of cover that here in a minute. But what you will do while you're in college is you will participate in their monthly drills and potentially their annual training. But one of the things that you won't do is you won't deploy while being an SMP cadet. And that's one of the benefits that you have over your typical reservist or your typical guardsman that's going to school and using their tuition, tuition assistance is that while you sign up um, with the ROTC program and contract as an SMP cadet, um, your sole purpose is to focus on completing school. So whether uh, your peers in the reserves or the guards get called up to support a national or a state uh, emergency, uh, you will not. You will continue on looking at um, your finals and everything else that comes with, with school and focusing on that. So not only are you getting the financial benefits, but then you're also getting protected uh, you know, to focus on what's, what you're ultimately there for is getting that college degree. So the next thing that we'll talk about is, you know, what does it actually look like when you join ROTC? So the first thing is that we'll cover is there's two ways to join. Um, Everything that we've kind of been talking about thus far is, is kind of fallen into what we call that progression option. So you're going to continue, you know, all four years going to class, going to lab, and then, you know, you'll, you'll knock that out for the remaining four years. But what you see there, um, and the reason why we, we kind of got it broken up, um, you'll see where we talk about the basic course and the advanced course, 
is that the basic course is your freshman and your sophomore year. Um, and what we talked about before is you can kind of test it out. So two years, you, you've got to test out and see if this is something for you and ultimately make that decision. Um, and right there at the beginning, um, you see that first red star and that's the contract. So you've got that decision after your sophomore year whether you're, you're gonna want a contract or not because once you start the advanced course, which is your junior and senior year, you've gotta be a contract cadet. So progression option, ultimately four years, potentially three if you if you elect to forego a freshman year or whatever whatever the case is, and we can talk about that in special circumstances if that applies to you. Um, but four years, um, you're gonna knock this out. Um, the two things that you see outside of the class, the lab and the PRT, is the American military history. You're gonna have to take that. It can be at any point. I just put it within the junior year. Uh, your spring semester is when you'll take that. And then the summer of your junior year, you'll go off to uh, what we call our advanced camp. And the best way that I can kind of describe that is that is your, your final exam, basically, for the, the ROTC program. You're gonna go off to Fort Knox, Kentucky, for about 30, 30 days, and you're going to demonstrate not only how well you do on all the physical readiness uh, requirements, um, whether it's the, um, the the standardized fitness test, the combat water survival test, your ruck marches, all those different things, but you're also going to get graded on how well you do in land navigation. You're going to get graded on how well you lead your peers through uh, the scenario-based tactical lanes uh, that we that we teach you throughout the rest of the ROTC program. All of those different things uh, that your your culminating experience there is at advanced camp. Um, why is why is that so important? Is because what happens is we take how well you do at that advanced camp, in addition to how well you do at the university uh, ROTC program, and how well you do with your um, other academic pursuits, and all of that stuff generally comes together. There's a little bit more details in there, but those three three metrics there: your GPA how will you do in the ROTC program, and how will you do at that advanced camp. That's what gives you your accession score. And that score gets racked and stacked across all the different students across the nation, and that's what ultimately determines whether you go into the active component, you go into the reserve component, whether that's National Guard or reserves, um, and then additionally, what branch that you get, whether that's infantry, aviation, military, police, quartermaster, or whatever it is that you're trying to pursue. So it's an extremely important time um, there at the advanced camp. And of course, your college experience overall is important as well. So in a nutshell, the progression option is how you can um, join the ROTC process, generally four years, big year being your junior year where you go off to camp at Fort Knox, and then ultimately you get racked and stacked and you find out towards the end of your fall semester, your senior year, of what uh, branch that you were uh, selected for, and then ultimately commissioned at the end of that spring semester. So that's the general roadmap. Uh, the one thing that you'll see off there to the side is uh, special considerations there for nursing students. Now, in addition to the junior year being heavy for ROTC students, it's also extremely heavy for your nursing students. Um, that's the time where everybody's going off and preparing for their clinicals, and uh, doing a lot more of the upper division classes. And there's some options that we can do. Uh, we send you to advanced camp at the end of your sophomore year um, to kind of free up and allow you to focus on um, the life-saving skills that you're gonna learn during your, your junior year. So uh, progression option is, is the first way to join. That's what it looks like. Um, the second way is the lateral entry. So if you continue on and you um, decide, um, well, I didn't give ROTC a, a you know, consideration during my freshman or sophomore year, you can still join uh, the junior year. Um, there's some other things that you gotta do uh, to meet that, whether that's you go off to what we call the basic course. Similar to the advanced camp, uh, you'll go off to Fort Knox for about 30 days. Um, you'll get caught up to speed in a very condensed manner on the, on the material that you missed, and then you'll pick right back up in your junior uh, in senior year with the rest of us. So uh, two options, ways to join. Um, there's so many different um, ways that we, we can 
meet individual requirements that are in there, but that's that's the most general way that I can kind of explain it. Um, if you've got uh, additional questions, which I'm sure you will based upon this slide, uh, please don't hesitate to, to reach out and ask about those. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to cover is um, what does that look like? You know, so we, we've talked to you about some reasons you should join, uh, the financial options that you can get for joining, um, what does that look like over your, your college experience, but more so, what does that look like to you as an actual student? Because not only are you trying to come and learn, but you might also want to achieve uh, other goals while you're there. So this slide here is an attempt to kind of show you that you can juggle um, and do it quite easily and quite well um, multiple, multiple passions that you might have during your college experience. So you see here, this is one of our juniors, um, Cadet uh, Carter Nelson. And um, not only is he... Um, an extremely athletic individual and, and a, a key leader within the, the university's football uh, program, but he's also um, trying to pursue a physician's assistant um, degree. So he's, he's really focused on his biology classes. Um, and then, of course, uh, he also does um, weekend drills with his local uh, guardian as well. So he's, he's got all three that he's actually pursuing, and you can kind of see it there. Uh, on this on this um, templated schedule, uh, this is what he did for his classes last semester, um, but how he was actually able to to accomplish this. So um, it's possible. And then also, what I would say is there's a few things that we've done here at the University of Cumberlands to make it possible. First and foremost, we meet Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, we do uh, our classes on on Tuesdays. Uh, some universities in, in the, uh, the, the region uh, does it on Thursdays and they do it a little bit later in the day. But we made a deliberate effort to focus it on um, Tuesday earlier in the day. And that way you can see um, you're able to still meet some of your um, practice requirements with whatever um, athletic program. This one happens to be football, but I know that track, I know that wrestling, whether it's men's or women's or soccer or lacrosse, um, bowling, archery, or whatever, um, they generally do all of their, their practices at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So we made a deliberate effort to uh, structure our labs to occur before that. Um, and then the other thing that happens is um, we've got physical readiness training on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Some programs meet in the mornings. They happen to be on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. But if for whatever reason you um, are in a program um, whether that's swimming, we've, we've got a student that uh, is, is a swimmer, um, his morning routines or his morning practices were already dedicated to prepping for their season. Uh, so we knew that uh, Coach Shelley and all the, uh, the swimmers over there were getting, getting their workout uh, in, so we, we elected to let him um, you know, you know, forego the additional physical readiness uh, requirements as long as he came out and did a PT test with us for the semester. And... Um, he was able to continue to pursue um, his, his goal of being a swimmer as well. So uh, once they were out of season, now he, he came and uh, participated in, and helped motivate the rest of his, his, uh, his fellow cadets uh, doing the, the PT with us. So the main takeaway from this is you're able to do everything that you're wanting to do. There's a way around it all. If for whatever reason your, your coach changes something up, or uh, there's a game that interferes with some sort of training that we have, uh, we've got a good professional dialogue with all of the coaches where we'll make, uh, we'll make it happen to where you can walk away with your degree, walk away with your athletic goals, and walk away with, with your commission. So the next thing that we'll cover, um, it's a little bit of, of highlighting um, why you would look at this university's program versus some of the others. And... The biggest thing that they do here on the university, which you're probably a little bit familiar with, is it's a private school, close-knit community, um, and they've, they've got this, this slogan uh, going on now. It's, it's about one big team. And I can tell you that that is something that we've definitely felt a part of. Not only were we um, so uh, honored to have a fully renovated building and classroom, um, the university has also committed a lot of resources to help us you know, be successful. You see up there in the top right, 
Um, they purchased a, a quite a, a substantial amount of equipment for us to do our physical training. We've recently switched uh, within the Army to doing more of a functional fitness, um, you know, physical assessment test instead of our standard, you know, two minutes of push-ups, two minutes of sit-ups, and a two-mile run. Um, now that this new physical fitness test is there for us, um, we've got to make sure that we're, we're conditioning our students, conditioning our, our, our cadets and soldiers, um, and they were really, really awesome to support that and uh, purchase us some brand new um, functional fitness equipment uh, to pursue that. So great facility, great uh, resourcing uh, from that aspect. The other thing that they were uh, um, you know, willing to help us support on and, and really bring us into the team is they gave us some dedicated training area. It's a beautiful you know, um, area out in Williamsburg. Uh, we've, we've pretty much got a mountain to ourselves uh, we share it with the archery team out there, and there's multiple, multiple acres where you're really going to start to uh, not only enjoy being outside and enjoy the scenes, but then also uh, have that ability to um, really apply the concepts and the tactics that you're learning in the classroom out in the training area that we have. Um, in addition to, to having some dedicated local area, um, the university is also... Um, very, very supportive for helping us go out into some of the regional areas. You'll see some pictures there, um, generally uh, with the rappel tower or off to the far right where we go and participate uh, with uh, other universities, um, our parent university being Eastern Kentucky University. Uh, we team up with them periodically to get some additional training, um, not only in confidence building through the rappel tower and obstacle courses, but then also uh, participating in what we call our field training exercise, which uh, we do once a semester with um, with all of the cadets. Uh, I mean, it's just kind of a an extended training uh, opportunity for us to really hone our skills. Uh, and the last thing, um, not only are they resourcing us and helping us be successful, but they've really brought us into into the team by um, helping us do our ceremonies, helping us do activities, letting us be a part of the different activities in the community and being a part of um, the different programs that, you, that are on campus. Um, you see all the way from the far left, our, our campus-based scholarship board to our contracting ceremony to functional fitness challenge that we hosted. You see a lot of the, uh, the female wrestlers there that, were, that ultimately won the, won the day there. And then... Um, our participation in uh, the color guard events and then of course a lot of the community-based uh, activities that you see um, down in the far right with our uh, with the canned food drive that we we helped support so you really are a part of a, a big team here at the University of Cumberland's not only from the resourcing and the nice facilities that they give us but also allowing us to be a part of every event that uh, they've hosted here on the campus it truly is part of one big team. So the last thing that we'll, we'll do here is um, we'll kind of go to the frequently asked questions um, section. There's a, I'm sure a lot more that you'll, you'll have afterwards that help us increase some, some more of our frequently asked questions, but we'll kind of go over the, the general ones that we have thus far. So first and foremost, um, we always get asked, hey, if I join, um, the ROTC program, am I obligated to serve in the Army? Um, and no, uh, right off the bat, you're not obligated to join um, and serve within the Army. If you just take the class, like we've talked about before, if you recall, you've got two years um, to, to decide if this is for you and ultimately contract. So um, right off the bat, no, you don't have any obligation with the military. It's uh, depending upon whether you want to contract or not. Uh, the next piece uh, that we, we generally get asked is, uh, can you still be an athlete uh, while joining the ROTC program? Um, and like we discussed uh, in uh, about two sections ago, yes, you can. Um, a lot of our uh, cadets right now are athletes. Um, and they've continued to maintain successful uh, performance in that and as well as the ROTC program. Um, the greatest thing that I can tell you, uh, it's like we just talked about, part of one big team, um, everyone is, in here is, is very uh, passionate about their programs, but at the same time, they realize that 
uh, the students um, also have other other um, requirements and other things that they're trying to pursue. So if there ever becomes a, a friction point, um, the best thing is, is that we communicate with one another. And all of the coaches have, have done extremely well to support um, our training events, just like we've done to help support their, their program requirements as well. So yes, you can definitely do um, both, both options while you're here, being an athlete and being a cadet. And then the last question um, that we generally get asked is, how much time will I have to do other things while, while joining the ROC program? And I'm sure as you start going around and you start trying to figure out the merits of all programs across there, um, you know, there, there are some that are out there that offer um, some, some great um, benefits, but at the same time, they also ask an extremely lot of their students. So what you can see down here um, is we're not a military academy. Um, first and foremost, we want you to be a, um, an athlete. We want you to be a good student. We want you to pursue well on those because those will ultimately make you a better, well-rounded officer. Um, but it is going to take a little bit of time. Typically, our students dedicate about 10 to 14 hours a week uh, to be successful in the program. So you see off there to the left, um, you know, that's generally their, their weekly uh, commitment. Um, whether you're contracted or non-contracted, you know, you're going to, you know, participate in PT. Um, you're going to participate in additional PT on your own. Uh, we only have two hours with you uh, throughout the week, but there's some additional cardio and some additional strength training that you'll have to do. And then you'll do, like, like you said, the classroom, the lab, and of course, any preparation that you need to do. Uh, the concepts uh, are generally fairly easy to pick up, although at first it's, uh, it's a little bit of a deer in headlights as you're trying to understand uh, the different tactical terms and different graphics and of course the different concepts, but um, it's, it's repetitive enough to, by the time you get to your MS3 year, uh, you, you, you practically can be instructing everything for me. So um, that's what your weekly commitment looks like. And then of course, um, throughout the semester, we've got three different events. Um, like we've talked about before, that field training exercise, uh, it's over the weekend and um, that helps you hone additional skills it's really, really trying to give you more deliberate time to prepare for, like we talked about, that advanced camp participation. And then, of course, um, you know, we've got a team building event that we ask you to, uh, to participate in. And then, of course, um, a recruiting event. Um, for instance, um, you know, unfortunately, due to the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, constraints, we weren't able to do ours. Uh, it was a, uh, a nice ruck march through the, uh, the Appalachian Mountains uh, down there to, to do a memorial march for one of the uh, uh, the alumni of, uh, of the UT uh, system. That was what we were intended to do. Um, next fall, uh, we're going to go off and participate in the Army 10-miler up in uh, the D.C. area. Uh, and then, of course, we've got some other ones planned as well. So that just gives you an idea of the events that you're going to do for that team building event. Um, you're going to participate. You know, you would have seen some of our cadets in the, uh, the recruiting event if this was uh, to actually occur on campus. So those are the, generally the, the frequently asked questions that were asked. Um, I'm sure you will have a lot more. And like we discussed before, uh, please continue to, to reach out to us, schedule that visit, um, come and check us out, see the awesome facility. And then if that just doesn't work out for you and you, you have some burning questions, by all means, email us. And uh, I'd be happy to, to, to spend some time with you. Um, whether that's uh, during during normal hours or if, if you need to talk after hours. I understand everybody has got some different different time constraints on them. But thank you for coming out um, and, and taking the time to, to view this video. Uh, I hope it was informative and it helps you um, really think of some things that you're going to need to consider. And um, I hope that you're, you're going to be a part of our, our, uh, our program. So without further ado, thank you. And uh, we'll talk to you later.